I, I just feel like we are working too hard. And you can do all you want regarding cholesterol. You can cut out shrimp, which, you know, shrimp are full of the cholesterol. They give you the heart. <laughs> cut out organ. No. You can cut out organ. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> you can eat your own. No, they give you the heart if you eat a lot of them. It's not dirt. Shrimp off the off limits list here. Oh, but you can't eat a lot of it. You know, <laughs> like, I like a chicken liver. Do you like a chicken liver? I don't eat meat anymore, but when I did, chicken livers give you the heart. They all the cholesterol. But you can, you know, cut all the fat off your steak or cut steak out of your diet. There's no rhyme or reason, Mary. I'm sorry. That, that's who asked for my comment. <laughs> that's very important, I think, that perspective, and it's an Ugh. important one for... Um, for all of us women who are challenged with working late hours and a lot of stress in today's world. And so screaming at kids. So <laughs> <laughs> I would be too. <laughs> I was 30 years old, now 41. I was living in the prime of my life. I was a single mother. I worked full time. I was a part time personal fitness trainer. Um, I did all the things right. You know, I wasn't overweight. I didn't have any of the typical symptoms. So, no high blood pressure or cholesterol. I didn't have a major like family history, you know, issue. Um, so, I was on the treadmill, as you heard in the video, working out, was very fit, had heart palpitations, a little nausea, and thought, okay, what's going on? Something's wrong. I go to my primary care physician who misdiagnosed me and How said, soon after? like three months. It took a while. Because I was like, oh, maybe I'm tired. Okay. Maybe I didn't do the right thing. I didn't eat a good breakfast. Okay. So for a couple months, I kind of chalked it up to something else, okay. right? Busy life. And then the doctor misdiagnosed me and said, you're having panic attacks. All the tests came back and said, she's fine. She said, you're having panic attacks. You're depressed. Take three days off of work. And I said, no way. He's like, well, I need to- I was going to say, is that a man doctor? Yes. <laughs> then he said, <laughs> Not judging, just saying. <laughs> then he said, take Xanax, and I said, no, I'm not going to take that. And then finally, I go to see a cardiologist who actually listened to my symptoms and actually heard what I said. As a result, I came up with over 90% blockage in two arteries, so I have three stents in. Um, so they went and did an emergency angiogram and then the angioplasty to go in and put the stents in. I'm on medication, you know, for the rest of my life. Um, and then I partnered with Women Heart a few years after my diagnosis because I wanted to learn more about heart disease, especially in women, with it being the number one killer as well as in the African American community. So I am the lead of a Women Heart Support Network in New Orleans, which we are predominantly um, uh, susceptible to all the risk factors. So, you know, that great food, the gumbo, the seafood, the shrimp and everything. <laughs> so, you know, my message is to share, you know, with those women in New Orleans about, you know, heart disease and heart health. And then also work with Women Heart on advocacy programs in DC and work to lobby with the organization for heart bills. And you know, my message really is about knowing your body, kind of said it in the video, but if I had known my body and said, you know what, something is just not right and was persistent about it, I might not be here today to tell my story. 18 years old, I went in to get my wisdom teeth pulled. It was just a routine procedure. But that was the first time I was hooked up to an EKG monitor where they read the rhythms of your heart. So as I'm under the anesthesia, something was happening obviously with my heart and um, I'm coming out of it and I hear what I felt was chaos around me. Something's the matter with her heart, get her mother in here right now. So I started kind of panicking. I looked to the left, the monitor, and all of a sudden it went flat. And I screamed, I flatlined, I'm dead. I didn't die. I'm still here. No near-death experiences here. 18 at this point? 18. Okay. No near-death experiences at this point. I was super traumatized by it. Was immediately rushed with my mom to my grandmother's cardiologist's office where they did all the tests on me. And I was diagnosed with arrhythmia, which is irregular heartbeats. Uh, I, would annu I would get monitored annually, thankfully, because at 25, I was also very active in teaching spinning, which is aerobics on a bike. And thankfully, I went in and um, was then diagnosed with idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy, and cardiomyopathy is a weakening of the heart muscle. And thankfully, I got diagnosed then because most patients that get diagnosed with cardiomyopathy are actually, um, they suffer sudden cardiac arrest. People who don't have symptoms like me, they're asymptomatic. And of that statistic, it's like something like 10% 
of the patient survive. So it's, I feel so grateful to be here. It's been a long journey. I was actually told I couldn't have any children, which was awful because um, as you saw in the video, I had a procedure a month before my wedding and was told I couldn't have babies. And um, thankfully, uh, they, so they burned five sections of my heart and I recovered to where I still take medications daily, but I have two babies. Aww. I have an eight and a five year old, two little girls. Wow. Wow. And they're so special. And, um, and now my mission, I call myself a heart warrior and I really want to just inspire people to, to understand about heart disease. Can I ask you, it yeah. was it weird to have to go to your husband right before your wedding to tell him that you, know, you have a journey <laughs> regarding something very serious. Was that weird? Did you lie to him? Did you not say anything? <laughs> yeah. Did you wait until you know you got married? And no, I literally we were we weren't even engaged when this happened. Oh when I was first diagnosed. Uh -huh. I was so scared to tell him because I was told I couldn't have babies. Either. Right, right. And I was I mean I was twenty five at the time, you know? So here we're starting off a life together and I was so scared to tell him and this is when I <laughs> This is when I knew, like, he was just the man for me. Because <laughs> he just stood by my side. And, wow, good and story. And uh, so I love him. And, yeah. and now we have a family together. And I feel like we've been through that. <laughs> we've been through a lot together. Yeah. And, um, so, wait, how old are you now? I'm now, I just turned 38. Wow. Sorry, so it's been 20 years. It's been a long journey. And I still take medication every day. And it's part of, it's just... You know, when you live with a chronic condition, I mean, all of you, I guess it seems like you're all health in the health field. It's a daily journey. You get up every morning, you take those medications every day, you yes. start working out and you're like, I gotta listen to my heart and is something going on? Um, it's just, but it's just what we do. But right? most people have risk factors that they haven't recognized that they had or haven't addressed, or their doctor, particularly in the case of women, have not talked to them about. So I think that's, uh, so the, but about 20% of heart problems are not predictable, or at least they're not predictable or preventable in today, in 2060. We either don't know what causes them, or we may know what causes them, but we don't have a great treatment. And I think moving into what's different in women, it's all different. I mean, think about from the very beginning, the difference the sex difference between men and women in the cells, and that goes on through the lifespan. Think about the things that women are exposed to over a lifespan, you know, puberty, having babies, menopause, that are different than what men have. So I don't think anybody in this room would have much of a problem with assuming that there's a difference between women's heart disease and men's heart disease. But what were leaders in research and the NIH and everyone else up until about 20 years ago, they all pretended it was the same. So all of the research was done on men. Even studies that included women did not analyze them separately. And so we have been playing for the past three decades catch up in understanding the difference between men and women. So the research that we need is so desperate and that means women taking part in the research. That means funding research that includes women and making sure that those researchers report the results in a way that we can use the research to affect women. It's because I was taking care of a lot of men and women. And when I would sit down with a guy, I had a lot of data that I could say why he should take that medication, why he should have that test, why I could tell him <coughs> to say what his prognosis was, a woman with the same problem, I could not. Mm -hmm. There are differences in the type of heart <coughs> that, that men get versus women get. There's a difference in the way plaque is laid down between women and men. There are differences in types of heart failure because you can, there are a number of heart diseases that are directly after pregnancy or during pregnancy or, or impacted by pregnancy. And in fact, Women who get high blood pressure or diabetes during pregnancy are at marked increased risk for heart disease later in life. So there's so many things, and I, I'm very grateful because over the past 20 years, there's been huge strides. We know so much more, and these women, um, uh, as much as we're not perfect and there are misdiagnoses and, and gaps in care, um, 
things are much better, but they're nowhere near what they need to be. And so what I'd like you to take away is to help us with that, because particularly in communities of color, um, there is a lack of recognition by both um, the, the patients and the people treating them. And um, women are still patted on the head and placated mm -hmm. and told that they should take Xanax. Mm -hmm. It's not something that's just 11 years ago. I um, heard a story last week in my office about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So Tom's, Xanax, um, Lyrica, those are the three that people, uh, women with heart disease are often told to take rather than get a diagnosis. So um, get out there and encourage women and our policymakers. <laughs>